But, you know, STEM X, you know, really what we are is a consortium of statewide STEM education networks. We have 21 members from across the country, uh, and we're really excited to be able to share best practices across states, um, be able to learn from one, each, one another, bring other stakeholders to inform the work of what we're, what's going on within individual states, and then really harness the power of over 21 groups coming together to bring uh, better STEM education to students all across the country. If you ever want more information about STEMX, please um, shoot me an email um, uh, at the STEMX website. You can find a contact form for me there. We're just at stemx.us. Um, and so with that, what I would like to do is bring in our speaker for today. Uh, so we have Katie Vallis joining us. And Katie is the Community and Engagement Director uh, for Teacher Success. She develops campaigns and programs to empower our, our, the community of teachers to connect with and learn from one another. She also, uh, before coming to uh, Donors Choose, she taught as a junior high uh, teacher. She taught U.S. history um, at a Title I school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So with that, what I'd love to do is just throw it over to Katie to talk to us about, you know, the mission of DonorsChoose.org, how we can engage with them, and some interesting efforts that they've done in the past. So thank you so much, Katie. It's all yours. Great. Thanks so much for that really kind introduction. I hope that even though I was a history teacher, I'm still among friends here with STEM-minded colleagues. Um, and I'm really excited to have the chance to get to chat with all of y'all, um, in part because we're seeing more and more teachers who are doing really innovative things with science, technology, engineering, and math getting what they need on Donors Choose. And I know that you guys are experiencing um, and interacting with those teachers all the time. So um, just to kind of get things started, um, I think a nice way to be thinking about the role that Donors Choose can play is to think about the last time that you talked to the teacher, an educator, an administrator, a school leader, someone who had a really exciting idea for something that they want to do with STEM in their school. So they setting up an after school school coding club, maybe it was taking students to experience some hands-on learning somewhere in their community, um, or maybe it was um, that they really wanted to uh, bring in innovative speakers into the school to show students what STEM education looks like in the real world. Um, but what you heard from that person was they threw that idea, and then they put it up with the idea of, well, we could never do that. It's just not in the budget. I just don't have the money for it this year. Heck, I'm still having to buy copy paper out of pocket no way we're going to get that robotics equipment into our school this year, or there's no way we're going to get those laptops into our school this year. Um, if you've had that experience before, then um, I think donors choose can, can help. Um, if you don't, um, Rob, toss the reins to me. I'm just going to share my screen lightning quick just to show a little bit of, of what the screen looks like. Um, I promise there's power here. Um, so uh, uh, just sharing my screen. So if you go to Donors Choose, what you're going to see is you're going to see teachers across the country and 75% of the public schools in the country post requests for things that they need um, for their classroom. And it can range from everything from five iPads with, with Apple Care plans, as you can see um, on the screen here, um, to um, students who want a, a bottle rocket launcher so they can be experiencing different types of force. Um, and what you see is that those, um, those requests are being funded by donors across the country, um, ranging from um, businesses. Here you can see Wells Fargo is lending a hand by covering half of the project's cost. Um, individual donors who just really have fond memories of this type of learning in their school, um, or who maybe um, are uh, people who know this school or know this teacher personally. Um, so it can range from a lot of different um, a lot of different reasons why they give, but the the goal is that teachers don't have to pay for something out of pocket and able to really bring innovative ideas to life in their classroom. Um, so uh, just a few stats just to kind of give you a sense. As I mentioned, we're used by 75% of the public schools in the country. Um, we raised 100 million dollars for classrooms last year, um, which meant really wonderful things for thousands of teachers across the country. Um, and what we tend to see in terms of where the money actually comes from, because that's a common question, half of the funds are coming from donors um, who are companies or foundations um, who are passionate about certain regions or certain types of projects. A lot of them are STEM funders. Um, and, uh, and then the, um, a quarter of the 
funds are coming from donors who just are enthusiastic about giving to support classrooms, and a quarter of the funds come from people who know the teacher or know the school personally. So that just kind of gives you a sense. Um, but uh, the basic process that a teacher goes through, if they do have an idea they want to bring to life on the classroom um, or on the um, for their classroom, is they have a short proposal explaining exactly what they'll be using these resources for. A particular teacher is asking for infrared laser guns to help them measure temperatures scientifically. Very cool. um, what they did is they wrote up a quick explanation of what their um, school is like, what their students are like, um, and they explained how they're going to be using these in their school. Um, for anyone who's ever written a grant proposal before, you might be looking at this right now and you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's the shortest grant proposal that I've ever seen. Uh, and that's true. What we see is that it usually takes teachers about half an hour to write up this explanation for their, um, for their donors. So meant to be super quick, we know that teachers could be doing this on their planning period or during their lunch, so we want to make it fast. Uh, they write up a quick explanation of what they're going to be using the materials for, and then actually online shops for the exact item that they need for their classroom. So they don't just say, I need a thermometer. They actually pick out the individual thermometer that they need, um, so that that way we can make sure that we know the exact cost of the item when we're seeing those donations come in. And then what we add on to that is whatever is required for actually processing that particular item, um, as well as the actual fulfillment of that item. Um, and then donors are given the option if they'd like to make a donation to Donors Choose when they um, give to bring this to life. But it's optional, and they can omit it if they don't want to. Um, and then from there, uh, the teacher press post, and then their, their project goes, um, goes live. It's online. So right now, you can see this teacher getting donations, um, mostly from people in Utah, although Wells Fargo is donating to match every single one. Um, and it looks like this teacher has about 150 left to go. Based on the fact that their project just posted two days ago, I think that they're going to be in really great shape. Katie, so that, that was super mm -hmm. like easy to do and straightforward. I'm curious how you guys come up with you know the, the costing estimates for that many different types of uh, objects and tools and things like that. Yeah, that's a good question. So these actually aren't estimates. They're literally the cost of that particular item. So when a teacher posts this request, they do is they essentially, um, we offer uh, a few different, it's about two dozen different vendors where they can just shop directly there, add the item from Amazon or from uh, Best Buy that they're looking for, and then they attach it directly to their project. Um, this is literally, if you were to go online right now and shop for that item, you could find this exact item at this exact price. Um, because it's, it's, they've just shopped to get it there. I know, otherwise we'd be in for some serious, <laughs> some serious projections, um, especially when you consider there's teachers requesting everything from underwater robots to be able to mirror the pH in their the creek that's behind their school, to people who are requesting um, a specific crayon set that they need for their pre-K classroom. Um, so it's a huge range of things. So it's, they really shop for that item to attach it to their project. Um, and then once their project is fully funded, so once they get all the donations we, they need, um, we buy it for them and ship it directly to the school. So it's essentially, they've done the first part of the online shopping, and we do the second part of actually shipping it. Their wedding get registry together. Exactly. Yes, that's a great that's a great comparison. Um, so that's a little bit of what the teacher experience looks like there. Um, if you're interested in checking out your area to see what sorts of projects there are, you can literally go on to donorschoose.org right now, and you can search for your zip code. So if I look near me in New York, I can see every single project that's posted, and I can be able to winnow those down by which ones are math or science, which ones are um, other areas. I can look for three, fifth grade projects. Um, the reason I'm highlighting this here is if you're chatting with a teacher who may not necessarily know what to request, a really great tool is to literally take out the site right there and show them um, this is what a fifth grade teacher near you requested for math and science in their classroom. Can be an inspiration tool. Um, so that's a little bit of the, the what the projects look like and how they're created. Uh, the last piece that I did just want to highlight for you all too was just those offers that I mentioned. Um, so what we always like to do is we know that even though individual donors care passionately about STEM education um, and and people in specific regions can also be really passionate about it and want to support their local school. We also always like to make sure that we're um, talking with companies and foundations who can support that up at a really big scale. Um, what they typically do is one-to-one -one matching, meaning they'll half cover the 
price of any individual item. Um, what you can see right now is if you go to donorschoose.org slash match offers, you can see funding that is basically promised that's on the table. Um, many of these are national offers that any teacher that you know could be benefiting from right now. So if, for example, you know someone who's been wanting to start a computer science program at their school, um, right now we have half funding for um, from Infosys, any professional development that the teacher is doing to become starting teaching computer science. So if they post a request for that, if they're a middle and high school teacher, um, they can post a request for um, professional development for computer science, and Infosys will cover half the price of that professional development. Amazing. So, you know, it was really interesting, too. We we had our one of our working group calls today about partnerships, and our member from South Carolina mentioned that um, Stephen Colbert, who's on your board of directors, which must make your board of director meetings really fun, um, is from South Carolina. And basically, every time a teacher goes on to Donors Choose and posts something, Stephen Colbert or his foundation basically fills the request, um, which sounds amazing. Obviously, not every state can have that type of partner. But is that something common where there are like organizations or companies that are doing that amount of matching or targeting certain states? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so we, um, in the last two years, we've had basically people play Stephen Colbert on a national scale. Um, so two years ago, um, or that's to say in 2016, we had a day called Best School Day where people across the country, um, celebrities ranging from the founders of Google to Serena Williams, uh, funded their hometown state, so they every single project that was on the site um, that was from their state that they grew up or their city where they grew up, they funded everyone. And that was an exciting day. Um, we had a similar day um, earlier this this spring, um, um, earlier in March, where people did similar things for their hometowns or matched donations for all projects in their hometown. So we do see exciting days like that. Um, and, but I'd say the big thing, um, by and large, is we see people being their own, the Stephen Bear to the best of their ability, which is to say that they'll fund $20, $50, $100 mm -hmm. um, to support their hometown regularly. Um, so there definitely are some of those regional supporters, like you said, um, and Stephen Cobra definitely um, is a, a really, really generous one. Um, but um, by and large, what we recommend to teachers is to keep projects about $500 to $600, just so that an individual donor who might be feeling really generous that particular day can can still help make that possible, even if they can't give maybe $3,000 the way that a Stephen Colbert could. Mm. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. So yeah. you, said you try to keep it at about, you suggest about $500 to $600. Is that pretty much mm -hmm. the range? Um, and do you see particular um, are there particular times when the ask is much more than that? Yeah, sometimes teachers will post much bigger requests. Um, so, for example, um, a teacher started a computer lab at their school recently. So they posted a request that was several thousand dollars because they wanted to have um, 50 computers um, to, to get that started at their school. Um, it sounded like it was direly needed. This was a school that didn't have a computer, you know, that was made post 1995. Like this was a this was in desperate need. Um, but um, with those bigger ones, what we tend to do is we tend to suggest to teachers that they have a little bit of a, a marketing strategy in advance. Um, even though we can definitely have matching funds, like some of the ones that you can see here, and I think a lot of donors would be really, really moved to give to support that kind of um, tremendous effort. Um, we do suggest that a teacher maybe have some connections in their local community or have a plan for getting those in terms of papering their hometown with flyers or reaching out to local businesses and really thinking about ways that they can mobilize um, that first um, that first group of supporters so that that way if a donor comes across it on our site they can feel like um, they can add in their fifty dollars knowing that it's going to be a project that already has other supporters too and they won't be expected to give the three thousand dollars that they might need to get it even a little bit on its um, on its way um, mm. so we do see bigger ones but we yes do suggest that teachers have a marketing plan in, in place for those. Whereas for the ones that are more like $500, $600 or less than $1,000, uh, we see about 80% of those being successful. Um, with $400 or $500, that jumps to 95%. So keeping it a little bit smaller means that that smaller donor who comes across it will be more likely to give. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, um, and uh, you can see some examples of that on our site 
of, I think if you put on your donor hat and you look at a project that's here, um, you can see there's something really tempting about the idea of seeing that there's only $80 left, where you feel like you can be the final person to take it across the finish line. Um, so that's a little bit of that info there. Uh, and I think if you do have a more ambitious idea, those match offers can be a great tool. Um, we have um, one that was earlier this spring that I think was one that made me think of you guys in a big way. I know we chatted about it, Michael, the Science Everywhere um, Innovation Challenge, where folks were encouraged to um, have uh, hands-on learning happening in their science room um, in and out of the classroom, that students were really grappling with STEM concepts in a hands-on way. Um, and that was one where, for example, someone was able to get some really um, incredible uh, equipment for building basically an after-school maker space that would have been extraordinarily expensive um, had they uh, done it all um, out of pocket. I can't even imagine, but it was half covered um, by the Simons Foundation um, and the Overdeck Foundation, um, and then the other half um, was given by other uh, generous donors. And that was an example of time where they were able to get something really ambitious with a match offer. Um, the overview. The last piece that I could imagine being helpful, and then I'll open it up if you guys have more questions too, I'd be happy to, um, to help answer. The last piece that I thought you all might find valuable is um, a little bit more of um, what the teacher behind the scenes process is, if you are ever supporting a teacher who might be interested in creating their first project. Um, what you'll see is if they do um, get started on our site, they're just going to be asked to make sure that they're a frontline educator. That means that they need to be a librarian, a nurse, um, or they um, need to be a full-time classroom teacher or a counselor. Um, they need to be full-time um, and need to spend the majority of their time interacting directly with students. Um, if they meet that criteria, they actually find the specific school that they're based in on our site. All of their requests will be shipped to that school location. Um, and then they fill out some basic teaching details. Um, so, uh, so they're just like the basic steps that a teacher needs to go through. But I want to mention that eligibility criteria because I'm sure many of you might be collaborating more with um, uh, folks who are specialists in the district or folks who might be um, in leadership positions. Um, and they can still be tremendous um, help and advocates for, um, for their teachers at their school. It just means they wouldn't be able to create classroom requests. Um, but you do need to be what we call a frontline educator, meaning that you spend 75% or more of your time working directly with students um, to create requests on the site. Um, so that sounds like you don't necessarily need to be an educator within a school, but potentially also outside of school? Tell me about that. Who you, uh, do you have something in mind in terms of... So, you know, I'm just curious if it would also work with folks are running, like, after-school programs that are educational, um, mm -hmm. uh, potentially and, you know, and doing Mike, collaborations Michael, with, actually... You know, uh, yeah. Michael, I'll, I'll tie that to a question that literally just came in. So Erica Compton asks um, about the uh, the schools are called out, but could be a, a, a public librarian, or maybe the only option is not a, a school, not a librarian, but would a school librarian be able to to post something? Um, those kinds of uh, different. Yeah, school librarians absolutely can. If you're full-time employed by a public school and you spend the majority of your time working with students, absolutely. We have many librarians who um, yeah, are able to use it not only to get the books that they need, to the computers that they need, but also to really do so many of the things that librarians do to bring in really incredible learning experiences for their students um, uh, and for the whole school to life. Um, but it does need to be a public school librarian, meaning that if it's um, someone who works at the public library that isn't affiliated with the school is able to help fulfill that request. And that's only because um, many of our shipping um, elements, like the way that we promise transparency for our donors, is that we ship materials directly to the school. Um, and we do make sure that every person who posts the project is employed by a public school. So we wouldn't be able to do that with local libraries. Um, but if it's a school librarian, absolutely eligible. Um, and I'm sure that would be really incredible. Um, but if you do know folks who are um, uh, librarians who are not um, based in public school who have needs, I know there are other websites that hopefully can help them out. Um, uh, and one that some folks like is Adopt a Classroom can be one that I think has uh, uh, more general um, help um, as well as GoFundMe um, is different in that um, unlike GoFundMe, most of the money that gets donated um, is by people who uh, don't know the teacher personally, um, whereas GoFundMe is people who know the, the people personally. But hopefully that can be a hand. 
sounds like, though, there's a little bit of gray area if someone's working at a school as an educator, but also, you know, doing after-school programming, and they're looking actually to fund some after-school programming, uh, because that could still potentially be shipped to the school where they work and the programming's occurring as well. Yeah, as long as they're full-time employed by the public school, that works fine. So they're um, a, an art teacher in an elementary school who also runs an engineering club at the middle school. Uh, if there's anything else involved in after-school activities, they can definitely use our site. piece. Um, I know I've gone through a little bit of how you create a request on the site. Um, uh, the last piece that could be handy is seeing a few of the places where you can shop for materials. Is that something that would be useful or is there other, other things that I'm happy to take you guys into whatever spheres feel um, feel impactful. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we actually go to the experience of shopping on donors to choose um, just to give you guys a little bit of a sense. Um, what you're able to do is you're able to go um, through a few different vendors, including Amazon, to pick the exact items that you'll need for your classroom. Um, so those are like Shore Learning, ranging to Best Buy Education, Plastic, um, and others. The reason why I'm highlighting this is I know that a lot of STEM educators might have materials that they need that can sometimes be hard to source. Um, we pride ourselves in the fact that just about anything that you might need for your classroom or for an activity you can find through one of our vendors. Um, if not Amazon, who has everything, Granger or other folks um, tend to have some good options. And so really recommend um, comparing prices, getting the best deal, um, and these are going to be the exact items that get, sh get shipped to you, so um, picking carefully. Um, a little bit of the background there. Um, I guess the, um, the last thing that I could see being handy, and then if you guys have any more questions, I'm happy to, to jump in to help answer them. Um, the last piece that I thought also might be useful is I know that many of you might be talking with people all the time who would be really eager to support classrooms um, in your area. So if you do know a local foundation or if you do know um, a local donor who might be particularly eager to support um, schools, um, if it's going to be less than $50,000, we'd recommend um, that they uh, uh, use site to do that. So they can literally search for the zip code and donate there. But if it's going to be more than $50,000, they can set up a formal partnership with Donors Choose. We're we'll promoting that partnership, as you guys saw, um, on our list of match offers. Um, we would also be potentially doing outreach efforts to let teachers in that area know that this person is eagerly supporting classrooms in their area. Um, and so uh, the big way that you can just um, be a part of that, um, I'll show you guys if you go to help.donorschoose.org, um, if you just go straight to setting up making donations, um, you're able to do is you're able to find some information there about how you can partner formally with donors choose. Um, in fact, let me just bring you to the direct page in case that's something that is useful. Interesting. And so is that something that you think, you know, at a level of managing a statewide network that you're creating that type of partnership or exploring that type of partnership would make sense? For like if a state wanted to do, um, you know, a push to get, you know, more teachers of science, uh, let's say, uh, the materials they need for hands-on science in their classroom, and like, you know, a fundraising week across the state, is that something they could um, talk to the folks at Donors Choose about how they could, you know, put that together using the platform? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you go here, it's just donorschoose.org slash about slash partnership center, um, or you can go to Donors Choose About and find your way here. What you'll see is there's in some information about the types of programs that a foundation or a company could create, um, as well as some information about how you can partner with us to make that happen. So an example of that would, um, would be um, the Gates Family Foundation recently, or sorry, the Gates Foundation, not family, uh, although they're a family, but the Gates Foundation recently um, did a partnership with us where what they were trying to do was trying to um, help showcase teachers' best ideas for how to bring families into the classrooms and make families part of students' learning. Um, and so what they did is they backed a partnership for that particular idea. 
Um, and then uh, teachers posted their bestes, um, and there were some winners who won prizes, and everyone got matched donations. Um, but that's a way to really quickly generate teachers thinking in a particular way that they thought was really valuable of thinking about involving families and engaging families. Um, uh, and helping to support those innovative ideas. Um, so we've seen similar things. Yeah, if, if your state, um, if Arkansas is really passionate about STEM education, backing a match offer for Arkansas projects specifically, for anything that is an innovative idea for bringing hands-on STEM learning or bringing a specific STEM concept into classrooms, um, would be a great way to do it. Um, so, so one yeah, of our you know, attend actually had another Question related to that, um, Erica Compton from Idaho is curious about. Can you be a little bit more specific about kind of uh, who the sponsors would be supporting? You know, it's more of a formal partnership. Uh, for example, you know, focusing in on STEM-focused uh, schools or something like that. There are things, you know, are the ways to kind of bound uh, what would be supported. Yeah, in fact, our partners very frequently have incredibly specific ideas for what they want to support. So we have a partner, for example, who only wants to support field trip projects for third classrooms in three specific states. So you can be that specific. Um, what we do see is the vast majority tend to pick a specific subject area that they're really passionate about, which can be science or math, for example, or even more specific with that, a specific subject, environmental science, for example. I'll pick a specific um, region or grade area that they care deeply about, um, and what they'll do is they'll um, uh, fund those particular projects by matching donations um, that come into those. Uh, but if you're a donor who um, may really wants to hand pick specific projects, let's say that you're really passionate specifically about projects that are requesting um, a resource that you know is really high quality, maybe some text or some. Um, piece of technology that you know is really high quality. Um, mm -hmm. What you can also do is you can um, collaborate with us to help build essentially a page for yourself that will only be specific projects that you've um, you've set are meet your criteria, um, and then you can fund from that. Mm -hmm. That's also something that's available if you want to have kind of hand-picked projects um, for you. Um, the big ways that you can explore those options is through our partnership center, um, which you can see on the screen here. And if you Google Partnership Center Donors Choose, you can get more info about that. Um, and then a final piece, um, if you're someone who's just trying to um, get uh, people thinking about how they can be um, thinking innovatively in their classroom, but you don't necessarily have those kinds of restrictions, like you just want to encourage people to post their best ideas or get the materials they need, um, you can also do gift cards where you can basically give a teacher a $200 Donors Choose gift card, knowing that they can post a request on the site um, and then the gift card can, can fund their request. Oh, interesting. And so do you find that when folks already have a little bit of money donated that they're more likely then to get, like, actually make their goal? Yes. So when someone receives a single donation on their project, um, their odds of success goes up to about 86%, um, even regardless of their project cost. So that means that if they're uh, if they have a $1,000, $2,000 project, their odds really increase um, across the board. Um, so definitely do encourage people to um, get some uh, local supporters first, maybe to, to donate, to sort of make that first donation and throw um, like some fee into that request. Um, and what you'll see is a national community tend to flock to, to help support it from there. Um, and then what we also do note is, um, in addition to that, compelling projects are compelling projects. So if you're someone who doesn't necessarily have a lot of supporters um, in your local area, but if you post a tremendously compelling project that has a photo that grabs a donor's attention, that's requesting items that are described really beautifully, um, that has a cost that feels um, uh, feels like something that people could jump in to help out with, you'll see your project, I think, have a lot of success. And you see lots of teachers who do just that, who don't bring their own supporters, um, but who just post really high quality, um, exceptionally compelling projects. Very interesting. And you know, you did mention something there about the, you know, the success rate of these requests. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, overall, what does the success rate look like? And mm -hmm. outside of the the one tip you just shared about having some money uh, up front, are other tips you could share to you know to raise the success level? Definitely. 
Um, so across the board, 72% of all the teachers who post a request on our site are fully funded. Um, so that's our across the board success rate. Um, and uh, the big tips that we see that jump that even higher is if a project has a cost, as I said, $500 or less, um, the success rate skyrockets from there in the 80s and 90s. Um, and uh, the other big tip that I'd say, um, in addition to just making sure that your project is compelling and to, if possible, getting a few early supporters in the door um, and keeping that project cost low, um, the tip that I'd say is thinking about people who can sharing your project in addition to you. Um, so one thing that I know when I was a teacher using Donors Choose, I used to always do, was because these would be materials that would be benefiting our classroom, I would very frequently reach out to students' families not to ask them to donate because they didn't have the funds to donate, um, but to ask them to share the project out so that that way more supporters for our community could come in the door. Um, that was a really handy tool. If people could leave a stack of flyers at a coffee shop or if someone could um, just mention it casually to a colleague at work, those small donations add up in a big way, and that was a big tool for supporting our classroom. So I think asking people to share um, and be advocates for your classroom can also be helpful, not just asking people to donate. Um, a few times people obviously won't have the, the funds to donate, especially if you're in a low-income area. Um, so um, sure. something sure. I mentioned too. Um, we have another question in about when it comes to uh, this, the good rundown you've given us about what makes a project succeed. Is it available online or is the only way to schedule a webinar with you? Oh, so you have to find me personally. Um, if you can give me a call, mm -hmm. I can share it there. Um, no, in addition to that, we also do have some stuff online. Um, here's a few okay. different ones that I can share. Um, we have Great. a tip for success that's in our Help Center. So if you just go to our help.donorschoose.org um, Help Center, you'll find tips for success there. Um, and they list out a few of the things I mentioned. This can be a really great thing to share a specific um, with a specific teacher if you're telling folks about this as a resource. Um, the other thing is we also do have a blog. Um, I know it feels like everyone has a blog these days, so I'm, uh, I'm trying not to be too embarrassed to mention it. But we do, and it's actually, a, think post some really cool stories. So this can be a great tip if you want to see real teachers' experiences on our site um, or if you want to get teacher-sourced ideas. Um, what you can do is you can actually come straight to that um, to be able to, to see some specific teacher experiences um, and tips. So that's the donorschoose.org slash blog. Um, and I recommend that. Um, and you'll see on the right-hand side, there's extra tools there that teachers might find valuable. So like how to jumpstart donations to your project in an hour, um, how to fill your classroom if you're a brand new teacher who's just looking at empty walls, how do you get started, um, and a few others too. Cool. Uh, I mentioned in there that one of the requirements in here was that it, it, it be a public school. And I, I want to just get a little bit of detail out on the table about what that means because it means different things to different folks. At least um, I'm just out of Ohio here, and the STEM network here has a situation where we've got public schools, we've got a few charter schools who are members, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, some schools that are nominally STEM schools, which is like a third category that you only find in Ohio or in a few other places. So what's the, how is that parsed? What's public mean? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So public charters are um, are eligible to join donors choose. If you're receiving basically public funds, um, you're eligible. Private charters aren't able to. Um, and uh, what I would say is you can check out some more resources. I'm sorry to keep directing folks to Help Center. I know that sometimes hearing someone talk about a thing can sometimes be less helpful than actually just being able to read on your own time. Um, so if you actually look for eligible schools in our Help Center, um, which I is we list out a few more um, detailed requirements as well as providing an email address where you can just write into us, write a link to your school's website and say, is this eligible? Can I can I post a request here? And our folks can take a direct look at it to, um, to be able to decide. Um, but yeah, so we actually have a school eligibility wizard where you can answer a few questions about your school um, and then it can tell you if your school is eligible for donors choose. Help .donors and then search school eligibility, you'll find that as a resource. Um, hopefully, Ohio does sound like it has some complex things going on there, but hopefully this can still be a hand. Yeah, super helpful. Great. Great. Fantastic. So, 
are there other um, events coming up or uh, like the, the science one that you think folks should be aware of? Yeah, so always right around the back to school season, you see um, a lot of um, a lot of funding offers happening on our site. Um, there's been a few um, of what we call flash funding. Um, that's the word for what Stephen Cole did in South Carolina when he funded every single project. Um, so I'd say back to school season is a great time to be looking to our site. We constantly are updating the donorschoose.org slash match-offers page. Um, so if you look at match offers, donors choose, you'll always see new entries there. Um, but I'd say the big one that I do think could be really um, interesting for folks is Infosys one that I mentioned, professional development for learning how to teach computer science. Um, so that can be something that is extraordinarily expensive for a lot of teachers to have to do. And a lot of times schools just don't have the funds to pay for it. Um, so three big models that I'd say we've seen people use for making the most out of this is if you go to your school principal and you say essentially, um, I will become certified in teaching computer science um, at half the cost as long as the school can get it to be able to pay for this other half um, and Infosys will cover the rest. That can be a really persuasive, I think, comment to make. I'm thinking of my own principle in that moment where I said, you can get me certified in computer science and it's going to be $600. She would have jumped at the chance to be able to do that. Um, and then another thing to note, too, is that um, uh, everything is covered for the course that you're, you're going to. Um, so everything from uh, a stipend that you might need for like food and meals during the time that you're attending this course um, to uh, potentially needing some funds to be able to actually get it started in your school after the fact. Um, I just think this is a really great offer. Um, so professional development projects for computer science is a big one that I would mention. Um, and you can see there's a few different regions in there that we even have specific workshops that have already collaborated with us to have everything you need to be able to sign up. So even if you don't know the specific workshop that you're interested in, you can go pull up the, um, the information for an area near you you um, and you can even pull up a specific price quote that you can upload to your project. We basically have tried to make it as easy as possible to become certified in computer science. Um, so, so if that's something that you um, that you're interested, in, or you know, teachers who might be interested in, um, I think this can be a handy tool. So, so that's a big one I would mention. Um, and uh, in addition to that, what I would just say is um, there are also some regional ones. So, if you type in your state, you might also see some options there that are specific for you. Uh, so, uh, so I would definitely uh, go ahead for that. This is the donorschoose.org slash match offers page. Um, and, and those are some, some things that hopefully can be handy. Helpful. And so, you know, if a state is interested in, you know, pulling together um, some sort of effort to, you know, have a push around something like, you know, computer science or, uh, hands-on science within classrooms, and, you know, they're just not sure of who uh, or what funders or partners to approach first. Are there folks at code, or excuse me, at, at donors.org, that, donorschoose.org, that could actually help them make those decisions or identify um, potential partners or supporters? Hmm. We're not, um, so yeah, that's a great question. Um, we're not able to kind of consult to play that role of matchmaker. Uh, oh, you're in Kentucky and you're interested in computer science. Here's a fund in Kentucky who's excited for that. Um, but what we would say is uh, that posting requests for something in your area means that you're able to meet those funders who might exist in the area because they'll support the projects. Um, so that can be um, what we usually say is create the request that you need. Um, and from there, what you'll see is supporters emerge. Um, the, the last piece, um, I guess, is if you are interested in kind of digging through the reserves of previous funding offers that have happened on site, I, that could be a nice stalkery tip to be able to say, oh, wow, these three functions have all supported computer science projects. Maybe they would be someone who you might want to talk to. Um, so if you look up previous funding offers with our site, which you can just do with some uh, stealthy Googling, you might find out some information there that could be handy. Um, you know, it's always good to be good at your Googling. Exactly. Like um, and so it sounds like there's really two ways to kind of come to these, well, at least two ways to come to these partnerships. 
one is to do it in the front end and have um, idea that uh, your organization or a teacher at a school and another uh, institution, funder, stakeholder uh, wants to support and come with it all put together in some way um, to the donors to this .org site or to post something on the site um, and then there are ways, there are, I guess, funders or potential funders on the back end that see those requests? Is that how it happens? Yep, that's right. If you post a request, what's happening is not only will you automatically qualify for any of the funding offers like these that might be um, eligible for you, obviously then our individual donors who, um, who donate generously through our site can find it that way. Um, so yeah, either you can be playing that role of a teacher and getting specific ideas um, getting specific ideas funded that way, um, or if you're eagerly supporting teachers in your area um, and you want to do so financially, or if you want to um, support a specific type of project, then you want to do so um, with a match offer. And so, you know, to that end, there are, you know, some of our networks are not only service providers and coordinators, um, but they also have strong connections to um, industry partners and some uh, foundations or our funders themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, you know, what it, how funders um, sign up to, you know, engage with uh, DonorsChoose.org um, or if there are folks or places we should be pointing uh, people to to kind of sign up on the, the back end uh, to be supporters of these initiatives. Absolutely. So if you're thinking of a gift that's going to be more than $50,000, um, what I'd recommend is to reach out through that partnership center that I mentioned so that you can find that with Donors Choose Partnership Center. Um, and you'll be paired with a member of our staff who can help tailor basically the match offer that you, um, you're looking for. So it can be specific counties, it can be specific um, types of materials, subject areas, grade levels, anything else. And if you're also thinking of um, a larger gift, so if you're thinking of more than $100,000, we can also start thinking about um, really creative structures for that. So maybe it's an innovation challenge where there are actually winners and people are able to come up with their most um, creative idea, be reviewed by a panel of judges, and you can actually help um, encourage a specific type of lesson or a specific type of thinking in classrooms. Um, or maybe what you would be most interested in would be a promo code where what you can do is you can get everyone in a specific city um, thinking about STEM and typing in um, their favorite teacher's name to support STEM classroom projects from that teacher um, and see the donation doubled through you. Um, so there's lots of different structures that can take. Or maybe you're thinking of um, gift cards where um, at a back to school event, every single parent is given a gift card to support the project at their school, um, playing that role of, um, of supporting their, their scholars um, in, in STEM education. Um, it can take lots of creative forms, um, especially if you're looking at a larger gift. Um, thinking of less than $50,000, um, then I think the best option would be to be thinking about um, uh, that you can be finding individual projects that you might be excited by, or to set the criteria um, for um, how to build um, get two in the weeds with it, but something called a giving page where you essentially come up with the criteria for what types of projects you're interested in, um, and it auto-fills those types of projects that you can just go in and donate whenever you would like. Um, so if, for example, I wanted to create a giving page that would just bring in STEM projects um, for high school learners, um, maybe even just specifically 11th and 12th graders who are doing really um, hands-on STEM work that is going to help them be prepared for a college. Um, Set yep. that criteria, build a giving page, and from that giving page, support whenever I would like. Um, so the option, um, if you're thinking of something that's less than $50,000, that might be the perfect solution for you. Um, so that way, then what you can do is you can just um, apply those funds to, to projects that meet your criteria. Yeah, really creative ideas um, and really exciting. One of, one of our uh, participants, um, who is also a funder from a, a state agency, was curious about whether uh, the funders slash partners receive uh, information from the from donors choose uh, that would kind of provide them the information they need for for accountability, like mm -hmm. around 
the types of projects they've been supporting, the total amount of money they've been funding, or the locations of the projects, you know, the type of teachers, yada, yada, yada. Absolutely. Um, so there's a couple things that might be um, that might be interesting to that to that particular person. Um, if we funding projects, we give you a full impact report that shows every single classroom project that your funds went to support. A link to that project so you can actually look over it, um, as well as thank yous from every single classroom. So you can actually see. Um, let me pull up a quick example. You can actually see photos um, of students using those materials and a description from the teacher on what lessons they use with those materials. Um, and even student thank yous where they describe the individual lesson that they did with those materials. Um, we were big believers in accountability. We are founded on the idea that you should know exactly where every dollar you spend goes. Um, so we provide very detailed impact reports that way. Um, but and additionally, if you're, um, if you're working within your state or school district, um, and you're not interested necessarily in funding projects, but you know that the projects are being funded in your area and you want to get a good sense of what resources exist in those classrooms now because of our site, we can also help you out there. Um, so uh, what you can actually do is reach out to me um, and I can share my contact info in this. Uh, and I can help get you set up with a monthly or quarterly report showing every single um, item that's been shipped to your school district um, mm. and the school that it went to. So that if, if you're someone and who is helping to monitor some of those, you can know, okay, it looks like um, this particular school has been asking for a lot of um, paper and pens and pencils. Um, maybe follow up there to see what's going on with that. Or this particular school just got a bunch of laptops. Okay, this is Grinnell for our own district allocation. Yeah. Um, yeah. That can be handy. That is amazing. And it's just great to hear about all the, the flexibility and the options and giving and really the responsiveness, not only to the folks who are trying to uh, fill the needs of their classroom, but also the folks who are um, sending money or supporting money, supporting these uh, projects by making donations. It's really helpful to get a full sense of all of what's available and possible through DonorsChoose.org. Um, we've actually come to the end of our questions. So, you know, actually maybe there is one more, but before we, oh, I see there was one that actually just came in. So Sherry is asking whether you have other online fundraising pro products. For example, um, she's looking for a philanthropic online service for a STEM organization in the school. Um, in other words, kind of a GoFundMe type of product where she could build an annual giving campaign. So let me kind of what to shoehorn that into what Donors Choose does. That's, a, that's an interesting thought. Um, so we only do support public schools, um, and we still have you know, a ways to go to, to help meet our mission of every single high poverty school in the country um, getting at least one project funded on Donors Choose. So we're focused on that in a big way. Um, but if you are interested in bringing this kind of platform to your um, to your own uh, your own mission and to some of the, the work that you're doing, um, I think you'll definitely find there are some kind of white label platforms where you can basically take code that is open source code and make it into your own website um, to do stuff that's really similar to this. Um, so if you do some, some Googling those lines, um, white label crowdfunding websites, I think you might be able to find some stuff there. Um, or if you're someone who's not necessarily interested in getting out your own platform in that way, then something like GoFundMe might be more the, the, the source for you. Um, just a thing to note with GoFundMe is um, there is an automatic percentage of funds that goes to GoFundMe if you use that platform. Um, so if that's a concern, then, um, then I, I might argue for you building your own Build your, build your own version. Um, so, so sorry, we can't help out with that particular need, but um, but excited to see what you come up with if you do end up building your own. Yeah, great suggestions. And, you know, we, obviously we don't expect you to be all things to everyone, um, but, you know, it's great that you seem to have ideas for other options outside of uh, the Don't Choose website as well. Um, so, you know, with that, I, it looks like we've... Uh, hit all of our questions. Um, let me just double check. I'm not missing anything. Um, yeah. So 
I want to first of all thank you so much for participating um, in the, the webinar today, Katie. It's been really interesting uh, to hear about kind of the range of work that's done through DonorChoose.org and really all of what's possible on both ends of the system. Uh, and we're really hopeful that our networks will be able to take full advantage of it. And I have a feeling there'll be a few folks who will want to follow up with you directly to take you up on some of those offers that you made during the conversation. Uh, it's been great having you. We really appreciate all of the questions um, from our audience. Feel free again to join us next month. We'll be talking to uh, the folks uh, from the Million Women's Mentor Movement. Uh, Sheila Boyington and some of her uh, colleagues will be joining us to talk about uh, what they're doing to help match STEM professionals with um, students of all ages to help them uh, continue to be interested in pursuing a STEM career. Um, and so we're really excited to have her online to talk about how they're su supporting women all across the country. Um, so with that, everyone so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. It was a pleasure to chat with all of you. Um, and I did just drop an email address in the chat, so if you do want to reach out with any questions, I'm happy to help. Thank you. So valuable. Have a great day, all. Bye. Hi, everybody. Oh, yes. Yeah. We will um, in our in our announcement about the uh, um, May. This will in the bottom of that, that note. It'll be posted to YouTube and the Stamex website. Yep. We'll call in about three weeks.